When you're using an oscilloscope, one of the most important controls to understand is the trigger control. In this video, we'll look at how scopes are triggered, how to use the trigger function, and how the controls operate. We'll show you how it enables you to see a clear, steady image of repetitive waveforms, and how it also enables you to capture precisely the waveform you need for single events. And we'll also describe some of the more advanced trigger facilities available in modern oscilloscopes. So what is triggering? Oscilloscopes can capture either single shot events, so you can set up a trigger to trigger an event, stops the acquisition, captures it just once, or you can set it up to repetitively trigger and display the signal on the screen. If an oscilloscope didn't have a trigger capability, it would start its scan, or in the case of digital scopes, it would acquire data in a random way, and it would not be synchronized to any specific events. The scope would not display the nice, stable signals we're used to. Without a trigger, the scope's scan or acquisition would start at any time, and we would see whatever events occurred at that time. If running repetitively, the oscilloscope would just display a blur. The best we might be able to do is to have a view of a waveform moving across the screen, like we see here, if we could manually synchronise the scan or acquisition. By starting the oscilloscope scan or acquisition at the same point on each repetition of the waveform, it's possible to see a stable image. Analog scopes used to start the scan at the point of triggering, and we'll use this approach for some of the animations, as it provides a good way of explaining what's happening. We're able to set the trigger point to a particular value, and when the waveform reaches this, the trigger is fired and the scan starts, and the waveform is seen on the screen. To see how to set the trigger, you'll be able to see an area of the oscilloscope front panel that contains the trigger controls. There are several things you can do with this. The simplest are to set the trigger point and the trigger slope. Let's see how this is done. Here we see a scope screen displaying a waveform. The trigger voltage is shown as a red dot in this example, but normally this would not be seen. Using the trigger point control on the scope, it's possible to alter the voltage at which the waveform triggers. It can be moved up and down. And we see that this display has been triggered as the waveform is going upwards. In other words, on the positive slope. But it's also possible to trigger it on the negative slope. There is normally a switch on the front panel to do this. Let's see how this works on an actual scope. Here we see the scope in its untriggered state, and by adjusting the trigger to a voltage within the range of the waveform, the scope triggers and the waveform becomes stable. On this scope, it'll be noticed that the trigger point, as seen by the spot on the trace, is at the centre of the screen. This is because it's a digital oscilloscope, and using digital processing, it's able to provide more capabilities. The waveform can be processed to provide a more useful display, with 50% of the waveform seen before the trigger point, and 50% afterwards. So what other forms of trigger are there? Oscilloscopes come equipped with a large variety of trigger conditions. Each one allows a user to go in and customize the parameters on it. So for example, a user could say, I want to trigger on a pulse width of a certain amount, greater than, less than, equal. They could trigger on a pattern. They could trigger on an edge or other types of um, conditions. One of the things that has evolved in the oscilloscope industry is the addition of protocol triggers. These allow a user to specify the trigger at a packet level. So for example, I squared C, SPI, UART, USB, and a user can set up the trigger at the packet level and have the scope um, trigger when it identifies a certain patent packet and its characteristics. And now here are some practical points to remember when triggering a scope. With triggering, make sure that you get a really stable trigger on the signal so that you can actually make quantitative measurements on that, whatever you're looking at, and so on. Don't forget that while triggering is usually done on signals connected to one of the regular scope channels, in some cases an external trigger input can be used. 
For example, if the trigger signal is coming from another piece of equipment, this can really help in some instances. It also helps to adjust the trigger level for the best display. It can help reduce occasional triggering on different parts of the waveform. So there we have it, a brief overview of oscilloscope triggering.